Hello and welcome to our podcast lesson. My name is Derwin Ante, your teacher podcaster. Today, you will hear mind-blowing information about plants as well as their reproductive parts that you can keep and mind and implement in your daily life. The importance of plants to humans and just about all other life on earth is staggering. Life as we know, it would not be possible without plants. You can see different types of plants everywhere. They differ in size, shape, smell, and even the mode of production. Like other animals, plants need continuously reproduce themselves. Some reproduce through their seeds, while some utilize other means. For today's lesson, you will learn more about the parts that are responsible in plant reproduction. The most essential learning competency for this lesson is to describe the reproductive parts of plants and their functions. At the end of the module, you should be able to identify and describe the reproductive parts of the plants, explain the functions of each reproductive part, and cite the importance of reproduction in plants. Prepare your module as well as your pen. Turn your module on page 6. Study the diagram. Familiarize the reproductive parts of the plants and their functions. Now that you are already familiar with the basic parts, let's take a closer look at them. Did you know that they perform different jobs? Stami is the male part of a flower which consists filament and anther. Filament holds the anther which has the pollen sacs that contains pollen grains and are released by the anther when they mature. Sepals are modified leaves which enclose and protect the other parts of a flower when it's still a bud. When the flower blooms, the sepals support the bottom of the flower. A group of sepals is called calyx. Petals are the most obvious part. They are brightly colored. Thus, they attract insects for pollination. A group of petals is called corolla. Pistil is the female part of a flower, which contains stigma, style, and ovary. Style connects the stigma to the ovary. Stigma receives the pollen grains and is located at the end of the style. The mature stigma secretes a fluid that stimulates the pollen grains to germinate. To elaborate our lesson for today, turn in module on page 9. Always keep in your mind that stamine is the main part of a flower made up of filament and anther. And pistil is the female part of a flower made up of ovules, style, and stigma. A perfect flower has both stamine and pistil, while an imperfect flower has only male or only female part. Sometimes, both type of imperfect flower occurs on the same plant. Monoecious plants have both male and female flowers on the same plant. Dioecious plants have only one sex of flower per plant. Both monoecious and dioecious plants generally require cross-pollination. When a pollen grain lands on a receptive stigma, it forms a pollen tube down the style to the ovary. Melogenetic material passes down the pollen tube and fertilizes an ovule. Ovule becomes seeds in the surrounding ovary develops into the fruit. Reproduction is important for the survival of all living things. Without a mechanism, life would end. Plants play an important role in the ecosystem. All organisms will not survive and will die without the food that plants produce. Moving on, kindly answer the activity on page 10 to 11 of your module. Read the sentences carefully and encircle the letter of the correct answer. If you're already done, then you have successfully completed the module. Great job! Now for your assignment, pick a flower from your garden and paste it on a space on page 11. Then. Label the basic parts you learned from this module. Alright, I hope you learned something from today's module podcast. Thank you children for listening all the way through. Again, I'm Derwin Ante. Until next time.
Goodbye and have a great day.